What is the coordination number here? Four. Yeah, coordination number of four. So what are the possible geometries? Um, square root hero or square planar. That's right. And now I will tell you that it's square planar. So this is going to be a square planar. So let's try drawing what this would look like. Let's try drawing what this would look like if it's square planar. out the key issue here. Okay, and the answer is it could go either way. That's isomerism, uh, right? Isomerism is when there's more than one structure that the elements can take. So we need to draw both possibilities and then think about those two different isomers. Okay. So, so we have to do both. Is one more stable than the other, like that you would see it more? or Possibly, but that's not how that's going to be tested. Okay. All you're going to be tested on is drawing all the possible okay. isomers and giving them the right names. Okay. So that's what we're going to work on here. So here's one way to draw the two isomers. By the way, remember that as far as square planar is concerned, you could draw it either of these two ways. You could put all the corners of the square in the plane of the board. But in the textbook, um, this actually seems simple, but the textbook tends to do it like this. Um, so I'm going to follow that pattern um, using the wedges and the dashes. So these are, you see these are identical pictures. This is just taking this picture and rotating it like this. Okay. Um, so here, so this shows more clearly this is square planar. Again, if this was realistic, you wouldn't be able to see this corning because it would be blocked by this corning, but we draw them a little bit askew so that you can see everything. All right, now, um, this, do you remember, would this be called cis or trans? Are those terms that you remember your instructor using in class? Cis, well, let's, let's start with trans. Um, do you think that trans means that things are on the same side or opposite sides? Opposite. opposite. You might have heard the term transatlantic. Transatlantic means going from opposite sides of the Atlantic. This is cis. That's yeah, trans. this is trans because the two ammonias are trans to okay. each other. The two ammonias are on opposite sides, mm -hmm. and the two chlorines are also trans. Whereas this compound would be called cis. Cis is an old, I think, uh, Latin or Greek term, Latin, I think, for same side, although it's not, not, not used very much nowadays. But we still sometimes use trans, like in the term transatlantic, for things that are across from each other. OK, so this would be called trans, and this would be called cis. And these are two different molecules. What's the relation between them? They're isomers. Now, there are different types of isomers. Um, there's linkage isomers. There's coordination isomers. There's geometric isomers. There's optical isomers. Cis and trans are called geometric isomers. So if there's a cis-trans relationship between two pictures, they are geometric isomers. So these are geometric isomers of each other. What's the bond angle between these two ammonias? If you went from one ammonia to the center to another ammonia, what would be that angle? 107? I think you're thinking of a tetrahedron. Uh, but remember, this is square planar. So what would be the bond angle? 90? Yeah. That's a little bit hard to see in this picture. It should be easier right. to see in this picture. At least if I, if I had drawn this to scale, all of these would be 90 degree angles. I don't know if they really came out to be 90. Okay. But if I really draw a, a square, I'm not having trouble drawing things to scale. But if I was really going to draw a square, each of these angles would be a 90 degree angle. That's one advantage of this picture over this picture. You can't really see the angles very well here. Whereas here you can see these are 90 degree angles. It should make sense that this is square, since this is square planar and this is in the center of the square, we know that squares have lots of 90 degree angles. So the angle between these two ammonias is 90. What's the angle between the ammonias here? 180. So I think that's a good practical way to tell the difference between cis and trans. Uh -huh. All right, when things are trans, they have a 180 bond angle. 
And when they're cis, they have a 90 degree bond angle. I, I don't know if that's true for every type of compound that can come up, but I think that's true for the main types of compounds you're going to see in this chapter. Um, when things have a 90 degree bond angle, they're cis, and when the, they have a 180 degree bond angle, they're trans. Now, one thing that's confusing in uh, geometry or in isomerism is just because two pictures look different doesn't mean they are different. In fact, I just had an example of that on the board a second ago. I shouldn't have erased that. What's the relationship between these two pictures? The relationship is that they show geometric isomers. But what's the relationship between these two pictures? The relationship is that they show identical molecules. Right? Even though the pictures don't look the same. Right? So this is the thing that's tricky about isomerism. Just because two pictures look different doesn't mean they're isomers. They could be the same identical molecule seen from different angles. That's the hard part of working with isomerisms, mentally rotating the pictures to see whether they're really the same or different. It shouldn't be too hard to mentally rotate this picture and see that it would look like this. But sometimes it's much more difficult. All right, so just because pictures look different doesn't mean that they are different. Just like you might take a picture of my hand now and take a picture of my hand now. And if you looked at those two pictures, they would look different. But that, that, would, that would not be because they're showing two different hands. Yeah. They're the same hand from two different angles. Just like this is the same molecule from two different angles. On the other hand, suppose you took a picture now and you took a picture now. Those really would be two different hands. Mm -hmm. And there's no way that you can rotate one of the hands so it looks like the other. Because they're, they're different. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, For example, what's the relationship between these two pictures? They're the same, just rotated. These are identical. That's right. They don't look the same, but they're the same thing, just rotated 90 degrees. Mm -hmm. So these are identical. These are not geometric isomers. You can kind of see that because they're both trans, so that's not too hard. What's the relationship between these two pictures? Geometric isomers. Yeah. And what's the relationship between these two pictures? Geometric. Geometric isomers. That's one of the skills that you're likely to be tested on. Given two pictures, are they the same or are they an isomer? And if they are isomers, you'll be expected to know what type of isomer they are. Well, here we've learned about geometric isomers. Does this compound have a geometric isomer? Yeah, there is no real meaning to cis and trans here. Because after all, this ammonia is trans to this ammonia and cis to this ammonia. And if you think about it, anytime there's three ammonias, each ammonia will be, have a 90 degree angle with one of them and a 180 with the other. So not all compounds have all types of isomers. That's another way this will be tested. You'll be, you'll be asked, draw all the isomers. And you'll have to ask, is there one or two, for example. Well, if you're asked to draw all the geometric isomers here, you should only draw one. In this case, there's only the one isomer. So not all compounds have geometric isomers. This has no geometric, and so it would, it would be meaningless to ask if this is cis or trans. Cis and trans don't apply to this, 